Let's save some data on items by using NBT. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about NBT data. And this is, well, a way to save data on item stacks. Now, first of all, you're going to say, wait, item stacks, items, what is the difference? Well, what is a block state to a block is an item stack to an item. So simply put, if you have two different diamond swords in your inventory and you're going to use one to kill a lot of monsters, then of course what's going to happen is the durability of that one is going to decrease. The second one is not going to decrease because they're two different swords, right? But they're both of the same diamond sword class, so to speak, or they're both the same diamond sword field. But once again, they're different item stacks. So that's all that there is to it. And what we're going to do is when we right click with the dowsing rod, we're going to save this on a data tablet item. So in the custom package, right click new Java class called the data tablet item. And this will, of course, extend the item class right here. We're going to hover over this, create constructor matching super. And then we just need a few things. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically make this display the last or that was found, including the actual position. And then what we're also going to do is we're make, going to make this glint. So when data is saved on this tablet, it's going to have the glint effect. And then when we right click this item stack in this case, then we're going to erase the data. So we're going to first of all do the right clicking. This is the use method here. And what we're just going to say is if user dot get stack in hand and as NBT, so this is the first method that we need. This simply asks whether or not the specific item stack. So this returns an item stack, as you can see, has NBT data associated with it. And then we're just going to say user dot get stack in hand with the hand passed in. And then we're going to say set NBT. So this sets NBT. And then we're just going to put in a new compound, NBT compound. This in this case would be empty. Therefore, we're going to override it and basically, well, empty it out, so to speak. Then we're going to override the has glint method. This is basically the shine that an item stack has when, well, it, for example, is enchanted. And we're just going to return has NBT here. So it's going to shine when there is NBT data associated on this item stack. And then we're also going to use the append tooltip method, which is pretty cool. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say if the stack has NBT. So once again, we're asking, hey, does this stack have NBT data on it? And if it does, we're just going to say a string current or is equal to the stack dot get NBT this time. And then you can see what we can basically do here. We can, first of all, add stuff. So add, basically, you need to call the put methods right here. So you can see a bunch of different things that we can put here. And then there's also get methods. So we're going to get a string with a particular key. So this is tutorial mod dot last underscore or. The way that NBT data is saved basically is a very similar to a map. So we basically always map a certain key. So a key value pair and the key is always going to be a string. If this may be a little bit confusing, then I highly recommend going back to some of the basics. For example, in the Java introduction, I talk a little bit about key value pairs and the maps, for example. I will link this in the top right corner so that you can take a look at that. And Otherwise, we want to add the tooltip current or right here. There you go. And then actually the entire data tablet item class is already done. Now, this is, of course, not quite right because we need this to be a new literal text. There you go. But then, of course, it works. There you go. And then this is pretty much done. Nothing else to be done here. And what we want is now in the dowsing rod item. When we actually have a data tablet in our inventory, then we want to change some stuff. Let's actually, first of all, register the data tablet. So we're going to say this is the data underscore tablet. And then, of course, the name as well, a data tablet. There you go. And this is a data tablet item. Now, what's kind of important here is that the max count is one. And the rest is going to be fine. Now, what we're going to need is we're actually going to need a util class. I'm immediately going to copy this over. This is going to just make our life a little bit easier. All of the code is available to you in the description below. Get a repository and individual just as well. This is just, as you can see, has player stack in inventory. So we're just going to pass in a player and an item. And we're going to return true if this player has the stack in its inventory. 
and then we also have get first inventory index pretty much the same thing if the item is in there we're just going to return the first index that it appears in so nothing too crazy you can right so what are we going to need here i will actually also copy over this method but i will explain so this is the add nbt to data tablet method and you can see we're first of all making a well we're getting the item stack from the player's inventory by just saying hey give me the first inventory index here with this item so this player we're going to take a look at that inventory and give me the first index where this item appears so that's all that we really do here this is always going to be working so usually you can see this returns negative one if you know this is not the case but we're going to check if the item is actually in the inventory in just a moment but first of all here we then have okay we are making a new nbt compound so some nbt data we're putting a string on it with tutorial mod dot last underscore or this is going to be the key and then this is the value so we're just once again going to get the string name we're going to say at the position x y and z and there you go then going to be saved as you can see and then we're going to say data tablet dot set nbt and then this nbt data so that's actually all of the magic here and then there's one thing that we need right here so this is between the true and the break so once we found something we're just going to say hey does the player have this stack in its inventory so does it have a data tablet item if it does then we're going to add the data to it and that is pretty much all that there is to it nothing else now of course we still need some uh, translation for the data tablet as well as an item model and a texture so let's add the translation first of all as of course an item here they go with so the data tablet should be fairly self-explanatory and the actual item model is also just a normal item model so you can see it just points to the data tablet texture so nothing too crazy here let's also copy over the texture and there you go and that is pretty much all that we need to do so the real interesting thing for this is the well adding of the nbt data making a new nbt compound and with that you can then save data on particular item stack so for completion's sake let's see if it works all right we found ourselves back in minecraft and as you can see the data tablet has been added so let's see i found some coal ore and you can see it's already glinting and if i hover over this found coal ore at this particular position and if i right click then you can see i've deleted the data now one important thing is that because we're returning the first index we're always going to overwrite this one so you can see even though i now found the iron ore we're not saving it on the second one we're saving it on this one so this is something that you could of course also try for yourself changing around the methods a little bit so that it saves it on the first available item stack instead of just on the first one that is something to think about but overall this is how easy it is to add some well custom nbt data and some cool functionality associated with it to minecraft right once again all of the code is available to you in the description below github repository and individual gists as well but otherwise this would be it for this tutorial right here i hope you found this useful and you learned something new if you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated. And special golden thanks go out to MC Arctic for actually supporting me with the gold block tier. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.